This video is going to teach you about pitch class sets, and this is chapter two in the Strauss textbook. Pitch class sets are basically just a group of notes where we don't care what the order of the notes is. To make an analogy to tonal music theory, a pitch class set is kind of like saying that something is A major. If the chord is A major, it might look like this, it might look like this, it might look, you know, any number of ways. There might be like four A's in a row and then a C sharp and an E. But all of these sets would get the same label of A major. So normal form is kind of like labeling something A major. It's a way of labeling a group of notes um, and unifying them according to their pitch class content and not caring so much about the spacing between the notes, the order in which they appeared in the music. Um, it's just kind of an abstract concept, an arbitrary concept that is useful for communicating to other musicians. Normal form is the same thing, but for non-triadic entities. So if we're looking at a piece of post-tonal music, any of these things, which I'm highlighting in green, could be considered pitch class sets. It doesn't matter. This is the difference between tonal music and atonal music. In tonal music, it's really clear what should be grouped together because it belongs in a triad or seventh chord. In post-tonal music, though, we don't really care what the harmonic entity is necessarily. So any of these circles are viable options for pitch class sets. But that's something we'll touch back on later. Okay, so let's talk about normal form. Normal form is an arbitrary ordering of the set that puts the set into its most compressed form. A simple, compact, easily grasped form. So Strauss's example 2-3 really tells you everything you need to know about finding normal form. Um, so if you ever get confused, go back to this page, page 45, example 2-3. This is good stuff. Okay, the mathematical way of figuring this out is taking, let's look at example one, taking a set like A, B flat, F. You need to consider if it's the most compact way of writing the set. And what I mean by that is the most compact way of writing it within an octave. So we're looking at A, B flat, F. So one way of writing these letters in ascending order is to just go from A through G, A, B flat, F. So that's one ascending ordering of those pitches. But we have to consider all the rotations of this ascending form. So we're also gonna consider B flat, F, A, and we're also gonna consider F, a, B flat. I hope you can easily recognize which one of these formations of A, B flat, F is the smallest. It's this one, right? This one only spans a perfect fourth, whereas the first one spans a minor sixth and the second spans a major seventh. So F, A, B flat is the most compact form and that's our normal form. So the normal form is F, A, B flat, AKA five, nine, 10. This is the process that Strauss steps through in example one. Look at all these orderings, A, B flat, F. The distance between A and F is eight. And we care about the distance between A and F because that's the outer note. So we have A to F, and here we have A to F equals eight. B flat to A equals 11. F to B flat equals five. That's exactly what we found out looking at the musical staff. So the winner, the smallest number of these three numbers is five. So five becomes the normal form. F A B flat is the normal form. So now let's try it looking at only numbers. A, B flat, F, nine, 10, five. Now that's in ascending order and it's within an octave, but
but we have to look at all possible orderings. 9, 10, 5, 10, 5, 9, and 5, 9, 10. Now let's compare the outer intervals. 9 to 5 is an interval of 8. 10 to 9 is an interval of 11. And 5 to 10 is an interval of 10. So because this has the smallest outer interval, it is the most compressed way of writing the pitch class set. So this is the normal form. And because it's the normal form, we put it in square brackets. All right, so if you don't like to do arithmetic mod 12, the other way I'm gonna suggest that you look at it is, of course, to use the clock face. On the clock face, you simply circle the pitch class numbers you're dealing with, five, nine, 10. And then it'll probably be very visually obvious which ordering will be the most compact ordering. The most compact ordering uses this portion of the circle. The reason I can tell is because it's excluding the largest interval between the members of the set. So this interval here is an interval of four, this interval is one, and this interval is seven. So because seven is the biggest interval, we do not want to have that in our set. Nope. So the smallest form is gonna span from five to 10. Once you know that the smallest form is from five to 10, that's your normal form. Write the numbers down clockwise, in clockwise order, and put them in square brackets, 5, 9, 10. Compare that to what we did over here. We got to the same exact place, 5, 9, 10. I want to show you one more way. If you're not liking looking at numbers, if you're not liking looking at clock faces, think about looking at the piano. 5, 9, 10, you want to write everything within an octave. So here's five, nine, 10. You can probably tell that if we moved any one of those notes, it would no longer be the most compact way of playing those three notes. So this is your normal form, five, nine, 10. That's three different ways of accurately finding the normal form of a set. Now let's try an exercise. On page 71 of the Strauss text, you can see exercise number one, normal form. The normal form of a pitch class set is its most compact representation. Activity one says, put the following collections into normal form on a musical staff. Write your answer in the manner of a scale ascending within an octave. So it's given you here in letter A, a collection of notes that are on the musical staff already, but they're clearly not within an octave, right? So step one to figuring this out would be getting all these pitches within an octave. So I'm gonna do this with arithmetic first. So to get these within an octave, I'm gonna flip these E, e and F sharp notes down an octave so that we have D, which is two, E, four, F sharp, six. G7 and B flat 10. Now we're all within an octave. Now we have to try every rotation and find the smallest boundary interval. The distance between 2 and 10 is 8. 4, 6, 7, 10, 2, 6, 7, 10, 2, 4. 7, 10, 2, 4, 6, and finally, 10, 2, 4, 6, 7. You don't actually have to write all these numbers out. I just want to be super clear about what I'm doing, because all you have to do is compare those outer numbers. 2 to 4, that's 10. 6 to 4, also 10. 7 to 6, 11, 10 to 7, 9. 
So this is the normal form. 2, 4, 6, 7, 10. Now instead of writing it in square brackets, the instructions have asked you to put it on the staff ascending in the manner of a scale. So let's take 2, 4, 6, 7, 10 and write it on the staff. 2, 4, 6, 7, 10. There's your answer for 1.1.a. Let's look at another example. Question 2 says put the following collections into normal form using integers. Write your answer within square brackets. And again, let's try letter A, 11, 5, 7, 2. Now instead of doing it the arithmetic way, I'm going to do it on the clock face. We have 11, 5, 7, 2. I can see that the biggest interval is between 7 and 11. That's the biggest interval. I don't want to use that. So I'm going to go around the clock face this way to get my most compact form. Then I write these notes in ascending order. 11, 2, 5, 7. And that should be my normal form. If you just want to check because you don't believe me what the other intervals would be, 2, 5, 7, 11 would have a boundary interval of 9 versus normal form I wrote down there is 8. If we went from 5 to 7, the boundary interval again would be 9 as opposed to the 8 I wrote below. And if we went from 7 to 5, the boundary interval would be 10. So the first answer is the answer that excludes that largest interval. If we go 11, 2, 5, 7, our boundary interval is only 8. And it should be visually clear to you on the clock face because we're not going to use this portion of the circle because it's the biggest gap between any two pitches. That's most of what you need to know to complete your homework assignment. I do want to touch on one other possible case that some of you may have been asking yourselves about. You might be asking, what about if the boundary interval is the same between two different orderings of the pitches? Go back to example 2-3. Strauss talks about what to do in this situation. So far in this video, we've only been talking up through rule 1. Excluding doublings, write the pitch classes as though they were a scale ascending within an octave. Calculate the interval span of each. The ordering that has the smallest interval from first to last is the normal form. Now, if you have a tie, that's what rule number two is about. If there is a tie under rule number one, the normal form is the ordering that packs the pitch classes most closely to one end or the other. So, in other words, it will have a relatively large concentration of big intervals at the top or bottom. You can see this in action in example two. We have a set F, A flat, A, C sharp. If we look at all the rotations, we see the boundary intervals of 8, 9, 11, and 8. So that means that we have two sets that have the smallest boundary interval. We have a tie between F, A flat, A, C sharp, and C sharp, F, A flat, A. So to break the tie, we have to go on to this next step, comparing the interior intervals of the sets. So here's F, A flat, A, C. The interval between F and A flat is 3. The interval between A flat and A is 1. And between A and C sharp is 4. Compare that with C sharp, F, A flat, A where the interval between C sharp and F is 4, F and A flat is 3, and A flat and A is 1. C sharp, F, A flat, A is the more packed to the top than its competitor is to either top or bottom. So this is the normal form. What that means is that smallest interval 1 in the one with a star is at the top of the set. It's at the right side of the set. Whereas in the, in the set without a star, it's in the middle. So the set C sharp F A flat A is more closely packed to the top 
And so in our, you know, arbitrary ruling, that's the real normal form. Okay, now you might be asking yourself, what if we had had a one on both sides? Well, that's what's talked about in example three. In the set C, E, G sharp, A, B, again, we have a tie between two forms. So we have to decide between E, G sharp, A, B, C, and G sharp, A, B, C, E. Okay, so in this form, we have two, one to one side. And in the second form, we have one, two to the other side. So for both directions, they're equally compact. One, two, one, four, and one, two, one, four. We can't decide which one is more compact. So the next arbitrary rule we deal with is we say the second tiebreaker is the one that is more packed to the bottom is the winner. So the one that's more packed to the left is G sharp A, B, C, E. So that's the real normal form. And that's discussed here. So again, everything you need to know is encapsulated in example 2-3. I don't want you to get too stressed out about this more closely packed to the top or bottom thing just yet. Um, mostly what you need to remember is rule one, the ordering that has the smallest interval from first to last, from lowest to highest, is the normal form. So this is your big takeaway from this video. This is what you need to do your homework. And then if you find yourself in a sticky situation, flip back to page 45 and remind yourself what rule two is to break the ties. Happy normal forming.